Is that better? What about now? Is there an echo now? Can you hear me now? It's like the Verizon. Uh, hey, Brad, good to see you, Emil. So, Gloria, good to see you. So, let me see if I could catch what's happening. Am I still having that echo issue? How about now? There shouldn't be an echo now? Okay, great. So, I think there was an issue with the uh, my speaker on. That's what it was. I'm having like weird sound issues. Today on Skype I had weird sound issues as well. It was very odd. And uh, but Murphy's Law sometimes isn't a fact. But so what I'm going to do to start today's live stream is we are giving away the free one year subscription to Airbrush Step by Step magazine. That is this magazine right there. So on the cover is Gerald Mendez, who was here on a live stream not too long ago. So that's pretty good. Zavi, good to see you. So great. Um, oh, thank you so much for, for being patient with me, Zavi, today. I appreciate that so much. So, so there you go is a uh, one-year subscription to Airbrush Step-by-Step -Step magazine. Look how cool this magazine is. So if you don't win... Think about subscribing anyway, because look, it gives you, you know, like a lot of steps, you know, no filler, just, just technique. And I think it's fantastic. I think they're, they're international. They're based in Germany. So how exciting. They ship all over the world, which is really good. Hey, David, how's it going? Good to see you. So I have everyone in here. Now... I am going to go to one of the cameras here, and so I'm not going to look, and you guys can see it, I can't, so you see like, I'm like looking away, so I'm going to pick whoever it is. Right here, whoever this is, this is the winner of the one-year subscription to Airbrush Step-by-Step -Step Magazine. How exciting is this? Now, who could it be? Let's see. Let me move this aside. And what's up, Tone? So the winner is 88H8. ER88, which is Mark. So, Mark, I don't know if you're here today, but if you're watching this, go ahead and contact me. And I need your full name and your shipping address. And you're the winner to the one year subscription to the magazine. So, how cool is that? So, I'm going to be doing another uh, really cool uh, giveaway. And that's going to be uh, starting. Starting today, I'm going to give away a free set of my ink mixtures. And that's going to be light, medium, dark mixture with the white mixture. And the same thing. So for the next couple of weeks, you just got to go ahead and leave a comment and make sure you're subscribed and hit the like button. And you could win the really cool ink mixtures that we paint with every day here. So... That's exciting. So thank you guys for participating. Uh, this is a really good chance to win uh, the contest that I give away here. And what I'm going to do as well uh, is I'm also going to, uh, you know, think about some other really cool things we can do to, uh, you know, really thank you guys for being a part of this, you know. So Todd, good to see you. David Lee Trevino, good to see you. Uh, so let's go ahead and start working. So right now we're just going to go ahead and continue. Now today is today is Gloria's birthday. So everybody, uh, we just want to wish Gloria an amazing birthday. Uh, she's uh, 39 years old, and uh, so <laughs> it's gonna be great. So I'm so glad you're here on your birthday. What an honor. So continuing what we're doing, 
is we are just continuing, just gradually darkening these values. Now we're still with the light mixture here. We have such a great group here, very exciting. Uh, um, just so happy with everybody that's here and all your support. And also, I want to go ahead and thank the Patreon members, those who uh, went ahead and, uh, so I'm just gonna very quickly just go to my Patreon and I wanna thank those people, so give me one moment. Because uh, the thing is, uh, you know, with these giveaways and you guys going ahead and subscribing and leaving comments really helps out the channel. Uh, but also, it's just really amazing uh, those people who, you know, go ahead and, you know, every month give a little bit of, uh, give a lot, I should say, to, you know, to help, you know, to help with the, uh, you know, help with the expenses of running this particular, uh, you know, this particular channel. So it's it's really fantastic so i'm just gonna very quickly see if i could find my patreon members uh let's see just give me a quick moment guys okay so i'm gonna hit Okay, so we have a total of five Patreon members, which is really fantastic. And we have, I want to thank Ray, uh, Ray Havian, uh, also Wendy, and then uh, Robert Blackie, Brad Mummery, and Gloria. Thank you so much for keeping this channel going and uh, really helps out and you know if I ever need to get anything new such as new software or something goes uh, you know so uh, that's fantastic so you know patreon is if you can help out that's great if not you know we are I'm keeping this free so let's go ahead and thank you so much David I appreciate that Raul good to see you how are you man Okay, so what we're gonna do with the light mixture is we're just gonna continue darkening these values, but also making sure that we get these, uh, which is really crucial, is that you want to make sure that you're getting the transitions correct. You know, it's not so much the value, but it's like, how does that value go ahead and uh, buttress up with its adjacent value, right? So that's really important. You know, like a puzzle, it's not so much the shape of the puzzle, uh, but also how it interlocks with the puzzles on all four sides. Same thing with your values, very similar. Similar in uh, the way you should be thinking about it. So that was a pretty cool giveaway, so I was so glad that uh, I was able to, uh, you know, with the help of the editor, to, uh, you know, give that to one of you guys. That's very exciting. So once again, I have the light mixture. We're not making any really big... Uh, you know, big changes, you know what I mean? We are just, with the light mixture, you can gradually go darker. Remember, we're going for uh, relative value changes. We're not just going for just straight value. If we were, we get one of those little value checkers and everything like that. That would be, oh, good question. So, oh, the winner was Mark. Uh, 88HAER88. So, congratulations, Mark. And the pressure is 25 psi, uh, Emil, and I am uh, dialing it down. So, I would say I'm about 15 psi around there. 
but 25 at the compressor. So, you know, with these inks, they're very, uh, very thin in viscosity, so you don't need a lot of pressure to get them through, so that's really good. So how was everybody's week? Did you all guys have a good week? How was the weekend? Oh, so I think I should get that picture up for you guys, huh? Let's see. I'm going to look for that picture. So I'm going to add sauce. We'll go to files and I'm going to look for Katarina. Let me see. Where is she? Where is Katarina? There she is. Okay, so you guys can definitely see her over there while we're working. So that's good. Do I ever use color or spray uh, color ink or spray sepia for tone? Definitely, but I made a I made it a point in the last year to just work in black and white because I wanted to get more control to the point where I feel that I'm a master in control with the airbrush. And I think if I was worrying about color, I would have been worried more about color than just control. So that's one of the reasons why I only teach black and white right now, which is very important. Oh man, so you're feeling better? Is that correct, Wendy? Now, also, you know, we also want to make sure that when we're working, that the eyes and everything the drawing is exact the way we want it that's very important so those are crucial elements to make sure that you get and I'm just going to go ahead and look for my mono eraser where is it here it is okay so like right now in the eye I can definitely shape it a little bit better so you're always working on the drawing aspects. It's always important. Uh, I think it might be on your end, Wendy, because right now uh, my sound is okay. Is anyone else having any sound issues? And I just wanted to make sure that you were feeling okay, Wendy. Yes, Wendy had wants her cake. That's okay. Thanks, Brad. So, so sound is good. So I think it's just you, Wendy. Uh, oh, you're welcome, Wendy. Definitely. Uh, oh, so Emil says he has Dr. Martin's, and they're hard to. Yes, that's. I originally used P.H. Martin's white. Remember, guys, and we stopped that because it really was not the best. And the fifty-fifty illustration white. Uh, Drew Blair's illustration white is by far the best. And, uh, you know, you'll find that it just is night and day. So very important. Very important to use the best. So, you know, you find the best, guys, just by trial and error. And that's how I did it. But I can do all the trialing and error, and then you guys could just reap the benefits. So that's the good thing. see if I could darken her down just a little bit on the screen but I think that's okay yeah probably is yours Wendy because we're pretty good over here and 
And we're just going to continue on this eye, just getting the shape really. You want to get the shapes uh, correctly, those shadow shapes. And also the little creases, you can start putting them in. Now what's interesting, she has some really cool eyebrows which we're going to uh, not do right away uh, because they're so detailed and dark and there's lots of lights in it, that definitely can wait. So as you can see, when we go in, uh, oh, for erasing, I definitely use uh, Drew Blair's 5050 Illustration White. Uh, that's the best by far. Anything else wouldn't work. And as uh, and Wendy says, it is Speedball, which is the India inks that I mix my uh, light mixtures with. And so let's go ahead and zoom in on her eye, guys. Let's see. And we'll go ahead and we'll work on some of the uh, shadow shapes and everything like that. Let's see. So I'm going to get ready with my reference. Okay. Always at first you want to make sure that the negative shapes are correct. That's always important. The negative shapes are the shapes that are around the shape that you're painting. So what we're painting right now is her iris. There we go. Oh, so David, good to see you, man, and I uh, hope to see you next week. I hope you have a great week, my friend. And uh, Zavi says, how do you know how to stop spraying the light ink in the shadows? Or how do you know when it's dark enough? Well, it's a gradual darkness, you know, Zavi? You want to gradually get there. So we're just, we're just building up. As if you were working with a 2H pencil or something like that. Working with a pencil, you're not going to get the darkness that you need right away. You're going to have to do many layers. And that's very similar to what we're doing here, guys. So as you can see, the same thing is applying. And we're not going as dark as these eyebrows are, but we're just setting them up so when we do go darker, we know exactly where to go. So we're just building up those layers. Hey, what's up, Bill? Good to see you. So glad you can make it. And just very you're just building up the shapes of this eye we're going to get a lot more specific later there we go i think we are running out of the ink yes we are so time to put in more of the light mixture. See how easy it is to go ahead and uh, put the ink in. It really is very simple. See, we just, one, two, three, just like that. No easier way to airbrush than with my system. That simple. No mess, no cleanup, no cups, no no diluting or anything like that it's all done for you and you're just ready to get back into painting and that's the the great thing about this technique so good to see you bill so cool you can make it now bill has a youtube channel as well you guys should check it out very cool uh really some great stuff he's doing on there so definitely check it out, guys. I just subscribed to his channel 
just the other day. And just, you know, we're just taking our real sweet time, you know, just really just going to work on just indicating some of those eye, eyelashes in the bottom of our eye, bottom eyelid. Now when you're this close, you definitely want to lower your uh, air pressure at the, at the dial here. That would really make a big difference, otherwise you're going to get some massive spidering. Make sure you're not equidistant with your eyebrows or eyelashes because that will look very amateurish. So you want to make sure that you keep everything organic. go so you see it's a little higher uh, where the pupil goes up so we're just going to fix that So it's just sort of like we're not going to get too involved with detail right yet. We're just going to very slowly build it. But you still have to get specific at times. You just can't be totally general at this point. You have to put in some specific detail right now. So you see that, you know, it's starting to get some specifics but not too much you know you don't want to go crazy because you still got a lot of painting to do around this area so uh, can you download the reference photo uh, no because the reason being is that this is uh, this particular image was done by a photographer and I see him on the internet and he's allowing me to paint it and it's uh, michaeldavidadams.com so yeah michaeldavidadams.com is the website but uh, I have permission to paint it only uh, if you wanted to paint it uh, you would just have to contact him at michaeldavidadams.com Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out and see what we have here. So you see we got a little more specific, uh, you know, a little more luminous in her eye there. And, and then we can just shape that eye. So you see, little by little, she comes together. But we had to get a little specific. We couldn't just be totally general, you know. Yeah, he is an amazing photographer, definitely, Bill. Really love his stuff. And I saw his work on the internet and I just had to paint this and I just, you know, asked him and he was gracious enough to say yes. And so that was uh, very fortunate by me to have him say yes to me. Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to use my freehand shield and I'm going to show you uh, where the freehand shield really works when you want to do a hard edge. So let's zoom in on here. There we go. So you see that ear? Now we don't have to worry. This is all frisket over here. So I could go right over it. But uh, remember, you want to go perpendicular and not parallel. So you see how we get that really beautiful edge. Same thing here is you want to maintain an edge. And the reason why you want to go perpendicular and not parallel, because if I go parallel, I may crisscross, and that would not be good. So you have more control by going perpendicular out from the freehand shield. That's, uh, you know, my own little thing. 
I know when I go ahead and do it the other way, you know, parallel, uh, it causes a lot of problems. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. Every rule is meant to be broken if you find out there's a better way or a reason not to do it. But as a rule of thumb, I like to do that. Okay, so we'll just uh, zoom out and you can see how we could, we really got specific with that ear there. And let's do the same with the other ear, just show you guys how the freehand shield is not just for, you know, eyelashes and stuff like that and hard edges, you know, in, uh, you know, detail areas, but everywhere. I'm just going to get my reference. Now this ear, this far ear is much darker, but what I want to do first is I want to get that very hard edge, okay? It's still a hard edge. Even though the values are close to one another, it's still a hard edge, especially down towards the bottom part of the back of the ear. There we go. And right over here. Now, since we have Frisket on this side, we can zoom out. Hey, Alexio, how you doing, Alexo? Good to see you. So glad you can make it. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to shape the light here uh, the way that it's uh, hitting her ear here. Just parts of her ear are just getting kissed by the light. So what I'm going to do, those values are really dark. So I'm going to be about, let's see how many inches I am from the subject here. So I would say about two and a half inches. And I'm just going to dust over and sort of get those values closer. See on this side, remember, on the light side, everything's like loud, but on the shadow side, everything's like a whisper. Values are further away from one another in the light, and they're closer to one another in the darkness. But there's still a lot going on, so it's not like it's just this dark here. We have to pay attention to the subtleties, right? That's so important. So as we are just, we're still in a light mixture. Remember, everything's going to be much darker down the line. And we have the freehand shield, so we really don't have to worry about about being careful because we have the freehand shield to protect us. So even though I'm still with the light mixture, I can go ahead and really try and paint in those uh, dark areas. Remember you have the mid-tone and then you have the dark right here. So you're looking at value shapes, yes. You're also looking at anatomy, right? Your knowledge of anatomy. So right now I'm painting her zygomatic arch as it's coming down here, but I'm also painting this shadow shape. So it's uh, much more profound than just looking for values and edges, but you're also knowing that this is, this is also her jaw. So right now as we are working, we are just really trying to describe her form better and better, little, little by little, and that's how we do it. So I got up at like 5 o'clock this morning, what's up with that, right? I mean, I try to get up early, you know, as much as I can, uh, it's not easy because when I'm up early, I'm much more productive. I get more work done, and uh, so that's always good. Seems like the golden time is like from six to 10, so very productive during that time. If I'm not going to the gym, that's always the best. How are you guys? Are you guys morning people or are you night people? 
So actually with this painting, we're kind of getting close to the medium mixture with this. It's, uh, it's not as detailed. Let me lower the, uh, definitely gonna lower the saturation here. And remember, painting in three dimensions is not only important, but it's crucial to your control. That is something that you're going to really hear me say over and over again, is that you want to paint in three dimensions. It's not only important, it's crucial. So that's something that I'm going to be touching on again and again and again. It's going to get situated here. Okay. So as you can see, it's always important to move around. I always move around when I paint because, you know, you're painting, uh, you know, all these values and you don't want to get ahead of yourself. You don't want the, uh, the face to be way far ahead of everything else. Uh, now, Wendy says, was the 5090 the older reducer that we thought you couldn't find anymore? No, the older reducer is, I'll get that for you. It was, uh, I have to get that. Yeah, but the reducer that I mentioned earlier is no longer available. I don't think it was 5090 though. Might be. I'll check on that for you. And let's just double check on our focus. Okay, focus is good. Great. Now here's something with airbrushes, what's gonna happen? You get a lot less tip dry with my with my system than you do with anything else. That I can back up. But sometimes uh, you might get the needle uh, sticking in the nozzle just a bit. I paint like six to eight hours a day in airbrush so I can see the slightest micro changes. What I do is I just uh, pull the needle back a little bit, push back, and you'll see that it's not, uh, you don't have that little bit of a resistance that you had before. So, oh, trans see that's why Wendy, you know, transparent base and all these reducers and everything, that's why when you're learning how to air, we are learning how to airbrush, my inks are better in every way. Because, you know, think about it, trying to learn how to use the airbrush about, you know, viscosity and distance and air pressure, and then adding reducers and transparent extenders. I know artists who have been around a long time using airbrush, they can't tell you the difference. And you know what? They're still racking their brains, so just just not an efficient way to learn, you know, with all those different reducers and everything. So right here, I'm going to be looking at this uh, on her chin here, because there is a uh, definite shape that I have to get. There we go. So that's very important, uh, just in the overall structure of her face. I'll lower that air pressure. A lot of times if you hear a lot of wind, hey Willie, how's it going? Good to see you. Now I owe you guys a white mixture. Give me a couple of days because I'm constructing small boxes because it's just this little bottle. I don't want to send it in a big box. So I know we have uh, Raul and Willie. Those are the guys I have to send those uh, white mixtures out to you. I didn't forget about you guys. I'm just trying to get the best box. So I'm not, you know, paying a crazy amount for that little bottle. So I'm actually going to construct my own little boxes for that, which would be very cool. 
Okay, so we're just uh, moving around, continuing to move around. I'm going to use my freehand shield here because there's just a little bit of darkness right uh, where her shoulder meets her cheek here. Still with the light mixture, but you see how I just go ahead and just darken that one, one spot. I can even just come in. That little bit right there, same thing, there's a little bit right over here. Remember the one second rule, guys and girls, so ex so crucial. You know, if you look for a second and you paint for a second, you look for three seconds, you paint for three seconds. Those have to always continue to be the same or close. If they're not, what's going to happen is your subconscious is going to kick in and you're going to start painting things you don't even know what you're painting. So you want to be aware of what you're painting. And that's the way to know the subject by observation. Keen observation is so important. Yes, I do. It's under Painted Glyphs, Alexo. Uh, so definitely, uh, if you uh, follow me, I'll definitely follow you right back. Thank you for asking that. So it's Painted Glyphs. And uh, I, I do show some things on there I don't show on Facebook. It's so nice when we have the uh, frisk it up because we can really, you know, get more bold uh, at the edges. So now that I'm here, I'm just going to darken up that hair. Cans on pebble gray. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so uh, color line uh, is the. Uh, the, the uh, line of paper and the manufacturer is Canson. It's brand new, just came out this in 2019. They used to manufacture Dale Rowney's Canford cardstock, but that's now discontinued. But this is 184 pound paper, so it's really super thick and it's absolutely perfect. Perfect, perfect for airbrush because it's so thick, you don't have warping at all so it really can take a beating which is also really crucial for painting an airbrush so i'm coming in with the light mixture again i'm just going to touch on those dark values remember the values are not exactly dark you know as because we're using the light value but it's going to look dark because it's against all these light values when we come back with the medium value, the medium mixture, you're going to see how everything is just going to magically lighten up. It really is something. Now, Bill, you could use this technique and go over it with color. You know, you can go over it with anything. Oil paint, you can go over it with, with Createx or Golden. It's really fantastic. The reason why I started this technique was originally because I wanted to do underpaintings for my pastels. And that's how it did, you know, happened. Yeah, so shame, such a shame about Kirk Douglas, 103 years old. God bless him. I loved him as Van Gogh, right? Did you guys like him in that, Lust for Life? The best Van Gogh ever. Now right here, we're just going to start getting rid of some pencil lines as we go. Because, you know, you want to continue cleaning it up. Yes, 103. That is a very long life by human standards, but still always seems too soon, you know. just going to create a little detail in the shadows there. Remember, they're not just shadows, but there's things going on in those shadows. You know, with especially like in her nose. 
it's not just you know nostrils and nose right you know there's there's degrees of absence of light as it's turning away from the light source one of his best movies yeah going to just continue now right here we have the other zygomatic arch on the left side now when I want to go ahead and I want more of a gradation and I was telling Zavi this this afternoon I want to increase my distance from the airbrush right from the paper the airbrush from the paper so I'm painting in three dimensions so as I go further away I get more of a gradation and it gets lighter and when I go closer, it gets darker and less of a gradation. So you see by not just worrying about air pressure and how far you're pulling back, but a lot easier is just controlling how far you are away from the surface. And that's really going to give you control. Control you're not going to hear about. And, you know, I'm here to share that with you. Oh no, Gloria keeps getting knocked off. Oh man. There we go. Now, also remember that we always have the. Uh, so, Micah says the airman at the State of the Union address last night was 100. Wow. Oh boy. Now, oh yeah, the Tuskegee Airmen, that's right. Now, what we're going to do is we got to make sure that the forehead, although a tendency is just to leave the forehead just this, you know, sort of, you know, voided area, but no, there's there's bone and muscle in the forehead and that's being affected by light and shade just like everything else. So what we're going to do is we are going to address that. So we always make sure that we paint the whole picture slowly, you know. Oh, Wendy, you're getting snow tonight. That's pretty exciting. We haven't had snow in so long. See, I want to make this painting, and I have the perfect model for, the, for it. And so hopefully she'll pose for me if it snows. So that's what I'm hoping. So hope we get snow before spring comes. So uh, John says, Tim, can you explain why you go in and out from the paper when you're painting? Just control density of the shade? In and out, you mean distance, larger, further in, and closer? Is definitely for control and the amount of uh, sharpness to uh, smooth gradations. Further away is very smooth gradations sharp detail and darker is when I go closer. Emil says, hey Tim, uh, when uh, when will you send me my inks? Uh, Emil, did you purchase inks for me? <laughs> or are you thinking about winning those inks? <laughs> uh, Bill, great to see you. So uh, tell us when your next video is coming out. Anytime soon? Before you go? Because everyone here would love to check it out. Oh, Emil just ordered. Oh, man. You know what, Emil? I'm going to make them tomorrow, and I'm going to ship them out tomorrow. So that is so great. And so they will be in the mail, and uh, we'll make sure we get them to you right away. So, uh, so that's exciting. So thank you so much. So let's hear it for Emil for purchasing the set of the... Uh, Airbrush India inks. So always happy. That's supporting the channel and also you're getting some incredible inks as well. Oh yeah, you're gonna be in the running for the next set. So guys, just go ahead and at the end of the video, just do as you did before. Just leave a comment saying I want to win Tim's incredible airbrush India inks. <laughs> you don't have to say incredible. But, you know, it would be nice. <laughs> Just for my own ego, guys. 
but I'm only kidding. Uh, yes, so, and also, this week I'm going to get out those, uh, one bottle of white mixture to both, uh, Willie and Raul, because they ordered them back then when the white wasn't included, so I'm not going to charge them. Yeah, that's an added bonus. Plus, now I just started using uh, just the right amount of glycerin, so you have even less of a tip dry than you had before. So, always trying to get better, improve. And so, John says he did get the Extreme Patriot Arrow last Saturday. Oh man, you love it or what? It's so fantastic, John. I'm so glad. So, John, uh, you know, later. Uh, I'm going to uh, send you an instant message and tell you how I go ahead and uh, modify my airbrush to get even more detail, okay? I'll be happy to share that with you. Very easy modification, but really beautiful. Beautiful airbrush, but it's going to get even better. Reason is, I've been painting with this airbrush every day for at least six hours a day. We're talking seven days a week. And uh, maybe some exceptions here and there. But I've come with some ways to even make it more effective. And it's more detail. And I'll back this up with anybody. I'll go head to head with anyone. The Custom Micron CMSB. This could be just as good, just as much detail as that airbrush. James, good to see you. So I'm so glad that you came by. So James says he likes what I said about the bone structure, light touches every surface. Very true. And so, yeah, so I appreciate that. Now John says he does get airbrushes from the air adjuster when I put cleaner through the airbrush. Interesting. Uh, just when you put the cleaner through? So that's interesting. What about when you're just, uh, you know, regular painting? Everything okay? So that's interesting. Wendy says uh, chapstick works. I haven't tried that, but that sounds cool. So as you see, I'm further away, Emil, right? And further away, I'm gonna get much softer gradations and smoother uh, areas of tone. See, I'm so far away that things get a lot smoother. just the air controller valve so here uh, you get bubbles oh you know what happens when you are cleaning it some moisture gets over here or over here if it's on the outside of the airbrush you're gonna see bubbles so that's why so uh, that happens all the time you're gonna get little bubbles or because it's on the outside and then you're getting that little bit of uh, you know little bit of uh, air but that's only and then right over here, you'll get a little bit of those bubbles. But as long as it works when you're painting, that's all that matters. Yeah, right out of the right out of the uh, factory uh, over at Badger, it should work amazingly. So one of these days, we're gonna have Ken. I was speaking to Ken, who is the CEO of Badger, and he's gonna stop by. Uh, he said he might have stopped by this week, but if not one day soon so that would be great if you answer all our questions so that's going to be fantastic who knows maybe one day we could uh get a getaway a giveaway for uh something from badger wouldn't that be exciting 
I'm going to have to talk to Ken and see if that's possible. See, the thing is, we're still a small channel, and being a small channel, you know, there's still a lot of opportunity for you to win. I mean, your chances are really great. A lot better than the lottery, huh? Pretty soon we're going to come in with the medium mixture, not just yet. Now over here, there is a little bit of an indentation, you know, the sockets come in here and there's a little orbital ridge here, and then there's an indentation where the uh, bone, the cartilage of the nose comes out. So let's go ahead and indicate that together. I still have the light mixture, and I'm about two and a half inches from the subject. And that's important. So it's so crucial to really understand what you're seeing, you know? And so that's uh, what we, thanks so much, James. I appreciate that. Everything looks very light at this point because we are, you know, still with the light mixture. Well, once we come in with that medium mixture, then the dark mixture, things are going to start to pop. Trust me. And we haven't even went ahead and uh, did any of the lights yet. We're just painting mid-tones right now. I'm about four inches from this subject and I'm doing this very, very light value right over here. I'm paying close attention because we are painting a skull, right? You know, for all intents and purposes with, with flesh and muscles and skin and everything like that. So it's, uh, you know, very important to realize that. So if I was to go ahead, and sometimes it's okay to do this, is you can just uh, go to media and let's see, pictures. So right here we have a picture of a skull. So we can see, like if we look at this skull right together, Let's see. For some reason, it's not letting me move that skull. Oh, I see. Okay, here we go. So we're looking at this skull together. Now, this is why we are going ahead and putting in these little, little dark areas as we get to the bridge of her nose. You see that? So it's because of the structure of the skull that we're seeing that even in this very refined beautiful woman it's still you know a scary skull underneath you know so we do have to realize that's what we're painting and with that realization we definitely can look for things such as the indentation right here right so Yes, the anatomy guides, exactly. Well, Willie says uh, Sherry looks beautiful. Thank you so much, Willie. I appreciate that. And you are 100% correct, James. The anatomy guides are so crucial. So right here, so if you look at, uh, you know, the indentation of the orbital ridge over here, we can understand why this is, why we have that is because of what's happening uh, underneath everything. So crucial. And uh, you can see the nose is all cartilage, so you just see a hole. That's not very attractive. I like the way her nose is right now. Thank you very much. So <laughs> the nose, Carl, yes. Yes, girls look so much better with meat and skin. I agree, that's for sure. So much better. 
lot easier to talk to. And so looking at this skull, I'm going to be looking at her and saying to myself, where am I missing something? Is there some sort of structural thing I'm not catching? And so that's very important. I think I can get a little darker as I'm coming uh, from the bottom of her mandible right there. Jean Augusta Dominique Angra said, Anatomy, the muscles and bones are like old friends, though I have forgotten their names. So you don't have to know the names, you just really have to understand what's going on, right? And that's what we're doing right now, is we're basically just really getting together what's happening, you know? We recognize a friend or a loved one or a family member far away, like maybe like a block away, you can, you can recognize them. And that's because of their bone structure, you know? So that's very important. So I hope you guys, uh, you know, uh, if you didn't know that, I hope you come away with that knowledge. Remember, you know, fundamentals, you know, whether it's baseball, chess, uh, art, you know, anything, you know, the fundamentals, which is anatomy, light and shade, stuff like that. This is the first time that I see me compare anything with a skull. <laughs> yes, very true, very true. The reason why I think I did it with this one, because it's such a refined portrait, it's easy to get lost in the refinement of her features and not really realize exactly what we're painting, Gloria. So very, very good. So yes, this is definitely the reason why, because I have to make sure I don't get lost in <laughs> Gloria says creepy <laughs> that's funny uh, that may be uh, Kirk Gun Douglas's oh I see uh oh yeah there is a, a dimple there and as you can see we're we're gonna begin to uh, darken things up here and even up some value but, you know, those who are studying with me and who have studied with me, uh, it always is important to take your time. There's no rush whatsoever. Now, if I want a harder edge, I just go closer. So you see that, Emil? If I go closer, I get that harder edge. Further away, I get a soft edge. With that one second roll, and Gloria says she's gorgeous. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's do away with this skull for a while. Halloween is over, right, guys? <laughs> so let's see. There we go. Bam! Say goodbye to the skull. Okay. So, so what do you think of the different camera angles? You know, like, whoa, you know, you got cameras from this side, from that side. It's kind of crazy. But uh, always trying to do some new stuff. And, you know, with you guys... Uh, who are, you know, oh, I'm going to be doing a special Skype class with my Patreon. Just uh, one quick uh, lesson, and the lesson's going to be about selling your artwork on eBay, which I think would be pretty cool. So I'll let you uh, Patreon members know about that. And if you want to join Patreon, that's cool. Uh, that supports the channel. If I need cameras or anything like that, that really helps out or even pay the rent <laughs> uh, you know so that's cool if you can that's cool if you can't that's cool too because it's free you know it's for everyone not everyone can afford classes and not everyone can afford uh, you know to join patreon or whatever but it's you know a combined thing that we are giving you high quality art instruction and you you know and then you pay it forward eventually right that's what you have to do all right I think we are getting ready for the medium mixture but before I do remember we got to keep moving around oh thank you Wendy I appreciate that and I thank you Wendy has been a patreon uh, donor 
for a very long time, and I appreciate Wendy so much. Yeah, so definitely a special Skype class, which is really fantastic. Bupathi, how you doing? It's been so long. How are you? Yeah, just $4.95. You remember, you get to be part of those special classes that I'm going to be doing now and then. And it's going to be great. So, But if you can, and there's no pressure. We're all friends here. And, you know, so it's all good. So definitely. So before I go ahead and the medium mixture, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, work on the shadow of her shoulder here. The shoulder has a lot of structure and we can't just let that be just a, a light area without structure. You know, as uh, James said earlier, it's being affected by the light source just as much. So let's see. We're still in the light mixture. It's going to look dark, but once we come in uh, with the darker mixture, things are really going to start looking up. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy is going. We I have a lesson with Wendy tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. And I have uh, had a lesson with Zavi today, and uh, and then during the day I have a lesson with Zavi, and then Brad in the evening. So those are one-on-one -on -one classes. If you want to know about them, just go ahead and uh, you know go to my website, paintingglyphs.com, and you'll see it's uh, really fantastic. So, uh, and I love hanging out with my students, talking about art and sharing techniques and taking your work to the next level. That's what it's all about. And that's what the ink mixtures are all about, guys, is just taking your work to that next level, you know? Not having to worry about reducers and and transparent extenders and bases and all that. I do all that work for you. Oh, so that's okay. If only if you're feeling up to it, Wendy. That's all that matters. We can always... See, I always work around the schedule of my students. Because I know your time is just as valuable as my time. Sometimes even more valuable. So I'm just, as you can see, let's go ahead and start doing some of the particulars, right? So we're going to do some of the particulars in her lips here, her beautiful lips. So my favorite subject to paint is, is women. It's always been since I was a little kid. But I do feel that if you want to paint women correctly, it's definitely important to uh, paint the male figure too because they complement each other and one teaches you how to do the other better. So if you just paint the female form, what's going to happen is everything is going to be way too soft and you're not going to see uh, some of the harder aspects of the human form. And working with the male figure you'll find that uh, you, you kind of uh, get that sensibility and it's so important and you wouldn't miss it if you were just painting a female form. Oh, coffee, yes. Strong coffee, Colombian coffee. Now everything is so light, it looks like we're dark, but this is really super, super light. So when you're painting the lips, you always want to look at the larger forms, right? So, and there's no reason why you can't come in with a pencil and the later stages. I must rather you do drawing correct co corrections with your pencil than doing it with, uh, with the airbrush. Because we all have more control with our pencil. I don't care who you are. You have more control with your pencil. And so as you see, I'm just, see it's sort of uneven. Got a little bit of an upset stomach today, but I'm being a trooper. 
I made some cake today and I ate the batter, which was not a good idea. I, you know, when you, uh, you know, the, the spoon after you you finish mixing it, ugh, that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, but I ate the batter. Yuck. That was, and I think that's why I have a little bit of an upset stomach. Plus, I worked out today, and I really worked out today. Oh, my God. I kicked my own butt. Oof. You know, I work out as hard as I do when I paint, you know? I leave it all at the gym, you know? I give 110%. But sometimes when you do that, you might have overextended yourself. And I think today, I think I'm was a little bit too much of a cowboy. I know, but we shouldn't eat that batter because of our eggs, you know? That's nasty. Remember, it looks like it's a hard edge here at the lips, but it really isn't. Uh, the lips are really integrated, you know. Uh, Brad says his migraines went away when he stopped drinking coffee after the withdrawal. The withdrawal is a kick in the pants though, Brad, huh? That's rough. It's starting to feel a little bit better with the upset stomach though. I think hanging out with you really cool people really help, you know, honestly. And I'm not just uh, giving lip service, you know. I really look forward to these Wednesday nights so much. Even though I look forward to those classes, I love hanging out with you guys. You know, I meet you guys here. You become my students. It's really great. So, okay. So, let's, so, I hope that you see how I develop different areas such as the lips and everything like that. We're going to keep moving around. And uh, so let's see, what else can we do? I think we can go ahead and move into the medium mixture. I think we're ready. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, work on the particulars in her lips just a little bit later. But right now, let's go ahead and move to the medium mixture. So I'll show you how quick and easy it is to do that. So I have my airbrush here, let me just move over so you see I have my airbrush here and so when you're going from a light mixture with dark or a medium to a dark uh, you don't have to completely clean out because the light is not going to contaminate a darker mixture the other way around so let's say you had a medium mixture and you wanted to go with a light mixture then you would have to clean it a little bit because that dark mixture is going to change the value of the light mixture Okay, so we're going with the medium mixture right now. See right here. And it's just one, two, three. Wow, I look like I have big muscles here. See that? It's the camera. <laughs> yeah, I should do this when I'm working out. I'll feel really good about myself. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put this over here. Spray out. Look how fast that was. Bam, one, two, three, bada bing, bada boom, right? One, two, three. Uh, so let's see, can I darken uh, the picture here? I think I can, let's see. Uh, yeah, that's a little better. Can we increase the con? We wanna decrease the contrast a little bit. Okay, that's a little better. It's a little closer to representation of what I'm painting with. Also in here, let me go ahead and kill the saturation a little bit on the bottom camera. Okay, it was a little too blue there. Top camera is fine. Okay, so now I have the media mixture in there. And so we're going to start going in with the media mixture and just getting some of these darker values. As we come in with the darker values, you're gonna see that things are really going to lighten up. That what we thought was dark is actually a mid-tone. And then we're gonna to have to go over the darks and even deepen some of the mid-tones. Remember, we have the freehand shield over here, so it's no problem. 
you don't have to be so careful. But I want you to do the one second rule, especially where this hairline is. The hairline is actually one of the most crucial elements of getting a likeness of somebody. And I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> James says he loves his stage because he starts feeling snow blinded. Yes, with all the lights, right, James? Definitely. So I definitely agree. Yes, we're putting in some real value and things are starting to sort of meet out, you know, which is good. dark here, the crease of her eyelid. There we go. So guys, let me know how many people are in the chat room right now. If anyone could see that, see how we're doing today. Last week was pretty crazy. We had a lot of people. Hey, Gloria, happy birthday. Good to see you. And it's always a pleasure. And I'm so glad that your phone was working. Your phone is coming back to life. That is so cool. So James, is it your birthday as well? 16. <laughs> Our email cake is always the best. So right here, I want to go ahead and bring that dark in, you know? Yes, Gloria, definitely. James, if it's your birthday, happy birthday, my friend. And I'm honored that you're here with us today. That's so cool. So you see, I'm increasing my distance when I want it to be, you know, very smooth, you know? Oh, I see. <laughs> well... I know your birthday's coming up anyway, so you can never have too many happy birthdays. So it's so nice to have that freehand, the, uh, so nice to be able to have the frisket here. This gives us a freedom to really get dark and just know we're going to have that beautiful edge. <laughs> Wendy said she's drooling the thought of the chocolate cake. Well, 
like I say, this she looks real dark here, but it really isn't. It's just everything else is so light that when we put this here, it's looking very, very dark, but in reality, it's not dark. And let's go ahead and start modeling the uh, top part of her eye there, above her eyelid, sort of modeling this form here, just under her eyebrow. Because, you know, it's all three-dimensional, right, guys? So we want to make sure that we get it correct, that we feel that this is a three-dimensional form. That light is the most important player in this whole thing. Same thing over here. Now we're still in the medium mixture. We haven't even come in with the dark mixture yet. That's something that's going to be coming down the pike. I'm a good distance away getting nice smooth gradations here. moving around and as I, as I move around I can definitely see where I can definitely go darker with the values because I'm looking at the whole of her not just the individual pieces but looking how light is affecting her uh, you know and then sort of sweeping over everything going to get more specific as we go Remember what we do on this side, we have to make sure that we give the same attention on the other side. Everything, otherwise things are going to look out of whack. And that's crucial. Uh, crucial for that balance. Now you would think that we need a hard edge for the nostrils, but not in this particular photo. Uh, the hard edge, of, it's not hard edge in the nostril. So pay attention to the edges, guys, and make sure that we're not uh, darkening where it doesn't need to be dark. We have to check the values and not just worry about dogma like, okay, so, or symbolism, that the nostrils need to be really dark and everything else really light around it. But really with the one second rule, you're really paying attention to what's there. And that's crucial. So I can see right now I went a little too dark there. I'm going to let that dry before I erase. Remember, you don't want to erase when it's dry. I mean, when it's wet, if you erase, you're going to damage the paper. Now, uh, Brad and I are working on a fix for that, and it's still in the works, but it's very exciting. Right, Brad? I mean, I think we might have stumbled on something really great. So actually, Brad was the one, because Brad's a woodworker, so and he has a lot of years of experience. So he was telling me that wood is uh, paper, you know? Paper, paper is made out of wood. Uh, was that a train, Tim? Yes, I live right next to, actually across the river. I'm on the Hackensack River, and on the other side of the river in Ridgefield Park, the freight train goes by. So yes, you did hear a train. <laughs> See, I even hear the train because I'm desensitized to it. You know, that's so funny. So when I lived in New York City, you, when, you were, when it was night and you were, uh, you know, in bed, you could actually hear the subway rumble underneath. That was pretty weird. Still, everything's going to look super dark, but it isn't super dark because of what's around it. Everything else is white, guys. I'm going to pretty soon come in with those eyebrows because they're really important for the balance of this painting. 
so leaving them the way they are is doing me a disservice. So pretty soon I'm going to come in and do those out of necessity uh, because they are such an important uh, piece of the value structure of this painting. So I'm definitely going to come in with that sooner rather than later. So, did, uh, so how many uh, people are in the uh, room right now? Let me see if I can check. I can go on my uh, live dashboard. Okay, so we have 12 watching right now. And our peak, it looks like we had about 17. So not bad, a pretty healthy, uh, pretty healthy group. So I'm happy. So thanks guys for, you know, making this a successful live stream thus far. Let's go back. Uh, we are all ghost watching. <laughs> That's funny, Wendy. Okay, so even though we're going to go darker, we just... See, when I'm painting and I look at, and I close my eyes and look, whatever is out of whack, whatever comes really close to me, that's when I say, okay, I need to get rid of that. So right here, it's a little dark. So with my mono eraser, I'm just going to lightly, remember I waited for that to dry. How important that is to wait for it to dry, I can't tell you. Quick water break. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> but Willie says he's more of a zombie. I think I drank this whole water. I think I was dehydrating. I'm not feeling sick. I don't think it was a stomach issue. I didn't think I needed hydration. So my day was pretty full. I, I had a class and that was a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed that. So I still have openings, guys. If you're interested in taking my one-on-one -on -one class, which is 18 hours of instruction, the price just went up. It is uh, still good rate of two hundred ninety nine dollars. So, uh, you know, if if you already signed up for my class, you had the old rate. But I'll tell you what: if you want to take my class tonight, and you're out there, go on paintedglyphs.com. Uh, tell me right now, or instant message me, or email me. And I'll give you the old rate of two seventy nine. So, and uh, so that's something to think about. So that's not something I I will give other than in tonight's class. Will I give the old rate of two seventy nine? So right now it's two ninety nine. Still far less than what else is out there. And I guarantee you're going to get a lot from it because I give a lot, you know, and I care, and uh, you know. And I'm the kind of person who's going to teach you how to fish rather than hand you a fish. So a lot of techniques, a lot of no tricks, just a lot of ways of looking and seeing. My years of, uh, you know, my art education, all that is really going to be getting a lot. So definitely, uh, you know, you'll get the old rate if you let me know tonight or tomorrow that you've seen this. And I'll give you the old rate of 279 With me, it's all about. With me, it's all about getting control of your airbrush, and I don't mean just like passive control. I'm talking about your airbrush doing everything you wanted to do when you wanted to do it, and to be a sort of maestro with the airbrush. That's what I strive with you if you study with me. So very important, and I. It's very important to me. And it's very important for your development and for you to paint on your own, not just with me. So definitely think about that. Oh, thank you, Brad. I really appreciate that. And Brad's one of my uh, great students and uh, really had a lot of fun hanging out with Brad and you know he's such a talented artist and you should see what Brad can do with wood man it just unbelievable this guy is like a master just so incredible and 
Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. So as you can see, I'm just very slowly developing Katharina here. And as you know, we are just doing her zygomatic arch here. Yes, scales and exercises. Those are very important, very true. Uh, exercising value scales, uh, just learning how to use this airbrush, this crazy thing that we paint with, right? We're going to darken up that ear. Remember that ear, guys, is in shadow. So we definitely want that ear to be a lot quieter than the ear in the light, right? Yes, develop the control. And, you know, it's not just the exercising, but to have, like, guidance and how to exercise is so important. And one of the things that Brad and I go over and Wendy is distance, how important distance is, and uh, you know, when to use the medium mixture, when to use the light mixture, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So right here, I'm not going to get too involved in any kind of freehand shields here because it's in the shadow and in the shadow remember everything's quieter you know detail is quieter than what's in the light it's funny a lot of times even when I'm painting I'm like when is it going to come together, you know? But I follow the recipe, and that's what you have to do. You have to follow that recipe. And you have to say to yourself, I'm not worried about when it's going to come together. I'm just worrying about sticking with the plan. And that's the thing, you know, what I teach, I teach a plan. You know, every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. Sun Tzu, the art of war. And it's so true. And if you prepare and if you follow the game plan, you know, be willing to uh, make adjustments because it's always different when you're in the middle of the painting. Always something interesting shows its face, so you always got to be ready for that. Now you'll find when you're in the medium mixture, it's a little uh, faster. Uh, Yes, don't lick the batter, exactly, because then yeah, I start feeling sick, that's for sure. Yeah, still a little off today. I was going to paint after this, but I'm not going to paint after this. I'm going to relax. That's what I'm going to do, because I'm not feeling 100%. It's a map. Uh, James says it's a map and uh, know where you want to go and you really are and you can chart the correct. Very true. That's exactly uh, my, my sentiment exactly, James. So thank you for that. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, with an easy eraser, it's nice and dry, is I'm just going to lightly uh, remove some of the value here. Nothing too crazy, uh, just a very little bit. Because it's more of a transition tone over here. Same thing over here. I can just pull up some of that pigment uh, from the ink. Not pigment, but ink. So next week we're going to lift the frisket, put the frisket back on Katarina, and then do the background, and then reverse it again, and work on her face. So, uh, you know, sequential masking is, is really very good. I like using the kneaded, kneaded eraser when I can, because it's a least aggressive eraser, 
it doesn't dig into the surface and it just really nicely erases just the outward outward uh, layers which is very good so remember I'm giving away uh, with the next uh, three episodes this free uh, ink mixture set comes with two light a medium and uh, a dark mixture and a white mixture so what I want you to do is hit the like button and you guys can hit the like button now uh, hit the like button and then uh, if you're not subscribed make sure you're subscribed and then just leave a comment you know after the video is over and just say hey I want to be part of the uh, ink mixture giveaway the airbrush ink mixture giveaway and that's it and then you'll be in the running like chances of winning with my channel here our channel is so slim because we're still small right uh, Tim do you need to do a CV painting with coffee oh you mean like uh, you know paint with coffee is that correct like coffee? I seen that done before I think that's pretty cool actually That is really cool. So I'm about two and a half inches from the surface and I'm just gonna deepen those values there. Now it's almost black so I'm gonna definitely come in with the with the dark mixture later. But I'm really doing that one second roll to really see uh, the soft gradations here. Mike S says, Tim, when you draw your image, do you draw it out, draw it larger by hair, same size, or smaller by a hair than what you actually paint? I try and draw it right on the money, so exactly the same size, you know? Uh, always do. So, you know, try and keep everything, uh, you know, not having to make too many adjustments after the drawing. There are going to be drawings because we're not perfect, unfortunately, but. I try to have the drawing exactly the way it's going to be uh, after everything is painted. So try and be as exact as possible, Mike. Good question. There we go. Let's... So deepening the dark of her. Our neck is really going a long way by creating a, a tonal balance. Now here we have the free we have the frisket, so I don't have to be all that careful on this side. Now if I'm pointing my airbrush this way, I'm not going to get too much uh, overspray that way. So you see my thinking. Now I don't want to overspray over here too, so you know, just keep the direction of the air uh, away from where you don't want overspray to occur. But you see, it's just so nice that we have that ability with this uh, media mixture that just sort of sort of bring things together. Now we haven't even come in with the dark mixture yet, but as you can see. Now that I came with the medium mixture, you can see that I can extend the light mixture and bring this mid-tone over because things are darkening down. And then when I come in with the dark mixture, you're going to see that everything else is sort of gonna, going to fall into place. There we 
musical. Oh yeah, Todd says a poor man's, uh, yes, when the coffee, you, it's too old, you can go ahead and paint with it. I'm not sure of the archival qualities of coffee. I know it's kind of a quirky thing that people like to have paintings made with coffee, but my question is, is it going to last, you know? You know, long after we're gone, is the paint gonna, is there gonna be a way to preserve it? I mean, we might do the masterpiece of our life and if it's on something that isn't gonna last, might be, you know, a, a shame. So, something to think about. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to work on this reflected light right here. Now I can always dust that down. But this is what I mean. We're doing the large areas now in the first couple of episodes, so to speak. And then slowly we are just uh, refining. So as you can see, we're starting to refine uh, her nostrils here and sort of bring them in in balance with everything the same you know everywhere so right now we have some imbalance but you know we're getting there and little by little we get there so we're not worried about when we get there we just worry about being in the right direction I I'm kind of worried about airbrushing with coffee. You know, what would that do to the airbrush? We don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that. So little by little, she's coming together. But you know what? We are not in a rush. There's never a reason to be in a rush little bit of a reflected light over here we're gonna start to there we go okay we still have the medium mixture in our airbrush now we can we can go back into the light mixture and I think I will to come in and bring some of this mid-tone in here now we went over this with the white now there's several ways we can do it. We can go ahead and erase the white and pull up the value of the paper underneath. But I think it would be easier to just go ahead and uh, paint over that with the light mixture. But as we are coming in with the medium mixture, let's go ahead and work on this side here. So as you can see, we're moving around quite a lot and that's important. And James says as the total quality progresses, he feels like it's a slow motion cinematography special effects opening. Yes, it's so true, right? And I agree. That's a good way to look at it, James. Definitely good insight there. So we're just bringing in some of these mid-tones, darkening these values as we see them increasing our distance because we wanted to get soft value soft edge as we go into the lighter tone so little by little no worry about it uh, so Wendy says Brad coffee doesn't actually give you migraines it's a lack of it when you become addicted to coffee and Willie says Wendy you should paint with cake you know we were saying something about that Willie right with the uh, with the dyes and you know I could paint like we can paint like people's portraits on cake you know but like I said what if you did the portrait of your life and people are going to eat your artwork that's depressing you know this is like the greatest portrait ever like what if the Mona Lisa was painted on a piece of uh, was a piece of strudel and then they had to eat it and that was like the most amazing painting ever that would be horrifying I'm always thinking about when we paint that one painting, you know, like, ah, uh, you know, our, our most beautiful painting we're ever going to paint in our life, the one that, you know, just defines our struggles. And could you imagine if we painted on something like a cake or on someone's car? Oh my God, that would be horrible. They're driving away with your masterpiece, you know what I mean? So, 
that's a uh, little bit for me that would be kind of scary. And remember, it's a uh, little darker in her lips over here, so we're just going to... As I lighten up, I'm going to increase the distance. Rather than just, you know, fake it and just sort of do dagger strokes, I'm just going to increase my distance. And I'm going to have the most beautiful gradations ever. I don't have to worry about faking it with dagger strokes or anything like that. Yes, I don't want anyone digesting my art in that way. Softening up these edges over here, darkening down some of this here. Now, we do have that ear, right? So we have it on this side and that side. So let's go ahead and uh, let's zoom in on her ear, shall we? There we go. I really like the way the ear looks. I mean, it's really very beautiful. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the pencil line here. The India ink mixtures, the airbrush ink mixtures that I use, and the 50-50 white are perfect for erasing. The best products on the market, bar none. So both uh, the Createx 50-50 illustration white uh, and my ink mixtures, you can see, I can just erase at ease. And, uh, and we're pretty far in the game, aren't we? We're not just, uh, you know, doing this uh, you know, in the beginning. So this is like week number three and we're still able to erase. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to darken down this value here and extend this flap of the ear over that like so. Hey Todd, so Todd says, I think if Michelangelo and all the great master painters back then used an airbrush, Yes, Todd, definitely. I always said that, you know, Rembrandt would be airbrushing away and uh, so would Michelangelo, especially Michelangelo with those murals. Could you imagine what he could have done with an airbrush? Holy Toledo. So like I said, I hope it snows so I could, you know, hopefully get uh, this beautiful model to pose for me so that's what I'm looking for and hoping for well when you won't have any snow in the forecast because it's just so darn warm duct cake that's pretty funny <laughs> There we go. And there's just a little bit of value on the edge. I'm going to be far away. I just want to put a little bit of value on the edge of that ear there, just like so. Okay, now there's a line here, a little hair, but we'll worry about that when we uh, are deeper into the painting here. There we go. Now we can zoom out, you see that it looks so much better. It looks a lot more fulfilled, you know, uh, which is really cool. So Wendy says she'll throw her cat in the snow and let me paint your cat. Oh, I don't know. I don't think the cat would stay still. There we go. And so deepening those shadows. So as we are deepening things, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can go into her eyes and uh, let's deepen some of the darks in her eyes there. Just take it to the next level. Turn it up a notch. Isn't that what Emerald says? 
All right. See, that's Tim trying to be funny. All right, now, I'm gonna get my reference ready and we're gonna go and start darkening up some of this beautiful, beautiful eyes here. Whoop, I'm gonna dial down my airbrush and make sure I don't stay in one area because then what happens is the ink starts to pool and when it starts to pool, that's when you get spidering. We don't want spidering. In airbrush, spidering is never a good thing. Darken the value here. There we go. Then right over here, there we go. Remember, what we do on this side, we have to do on the other eye, right guys and girls? There we go. So let's move on to eye number two. There we go. And, and Wendy says, how am I seeing this stuff without glasses? Oddly enough, I only need glasses to read, Wendy, you know? Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, yeah, for something like this, definitely, I'm okay without glasses. For some reason, just reading really gives me trouble. I read a lot. Now, over here is very soft-edged, so I have to make sure that I maintain that soft edge, right guys? So you really wanna get outside of yourself. And so you really wanna make sure that you're doing that one second rule, only painting what you see, not what you think you should see or what should be there. Very important, you know? I think I'm nearsighted is correct, yeah. I can see far away, like unbelievable. Uh, it's just nearsighted. I think I have astigmatism or something like that where the shape of my, the lenses in my eyes are oblong and so I'm not focused. I have to correct my focus in my brain and that's bad. So for farsighting and stuff like this, I correct the focus in my brain. But for reading, I can't do it with reading. So as you can see, guys. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, Zavi says, how do you spray so close without spider or blotching of ink? What, what is the air pressure? 25 PSI. But the, the, here are two issues that you want to... Good question. These are two things. First thing is you want to have low air pressure and you want to be painting at an angle, not straight on like that. So you want to be painting on an angle. Second thing is you don't want to go in the same area too long. So let's say I'm going right here. I'm just going to go and leave that area. If I stay in that area and I am keep painting and then the paint's going to sort of pull up and then spider. So the thing is to move around uh, and don't stay in that area. I hope that helps. But yeah, the PSI is at 25 at the compressor, but I go ahead and dial that down something awful uh, with the pack valve. So I'm probably around 15 PSI altogether. Oh, I see. Yes, myopia, not going to see anything close up, I see. Oh, so that's why you have problems seeing close up, Wendy, I see.
So look at this, guys. We're already at the uh, 11.22 moment. Even with me not feeling good, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being a soldier for you guys. You see that? I'm really trying to, you know, the show must go on, so to speak, right? And so as you can see, we're just building up this slowly. I don't care when it's going to be done, part four, part seven, part eight. That's not a concern, you know? And that's why I don't take on too many commissions because I don't like, uh, I don't like to be rushed. And when, especially when you're painting, uh, if, you know, your subject is beauty, you don't want to be rushed. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Willie, I appreciate that. So let's zoom out and see what we did. Okay, so the eyes are looking better, right? It's coming together. Uh, we can definitely soften up some of those values over here, looking a bit on the rough side. But we got plenty of time for that. And so right now it's 11.23. So this is what I'm going to do real quickly. I'm going to uh, come back in with the light mixture. So I'm going to dump out the medium mixture. I'm going to put uh, some water through it real quickly. And I just want to show you guys fast like how when you go ahead and uh, darken with the medium mixture, the uh, mid-tones really start to reveal themselves. And those transition tones. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray some water because remember when you go in from dark to light like a medium mix to a light mixture you want to clean out the airbrush because the medium mixture will contaminate the light mixture and make the light mixture darker than you want to and after a while you're going to be used to exactly what those values are and if that's not the value you're absolutely looking for then that's going to be counterproductive so that's the great thing about these mixtures is that the value you're going to get is exactly what you expect you know, so that's important. Okay, so I have the medium mixture in there. And now, hey, Tone, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the light mixture again. And we're just going to start from a really good distance. And we're going to begin really shaping those mid-tones, those transition tones here. So you see... Now we see those transition tones a little bit more that we came in with this dark over here. And same thing is that you'll see now that we came in with some darker values that we're able to uh, enrich some of those transition tones here and what that does it really helps to model the forms a lot better and oh Wendy says she looks beautiful I appreciate it thank you texture is achieved not by not by anything like uh, stencils or anything texture is achieved by really paying attention to what's going on in the interlocking of values. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Brad. Uh, Brad says she's looking awesome. Take care, Brad, my friend. I will see you on Friday evening. So as you can see, we're just darkening those values and we can actually come in with lighter values with the white pastel, which is going to really be productive, really nice. See, what looked really light before, or looked, looked really dark before was really light, so we have to darken things up a bit, right? So. Everything like throwing a pond in a river, you know, you have that initial uh, well, initial impact, but then it ripples out. And that's what we're doing as we darken one area, it's rippling out 
and having effects throughout the whole painting. So as we go darker, it's going to ripple out again. And that's what's so important. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. And I hope you have the best weekend. Uh, Willie, you take care of yourself. And Wendy, thank you so much. Yes, two minutes. So I always try to give you the full two hours. You know? Uh, no compromise. You know, I don't want to compromise the integrity of the live stream. So I'm going to continue to the very end. And uh, I just love, you know, uh, really ending on a high note here. There we go. See, now we have that light mixture. We can do these little subtle little indentations of flesh, you know, where the corner of her mouth is sort of going inside, you know, inside her cheek. Uh, James says, great point on texture, especially from murals of false, false perspective. Exactly. As you concentrate uh, on the values and the interlocking uh, adjacent edges, you will definitely start to see that texture will happen naturally. You don't need to have stencils. And that's something I teach rather heavily in my classes. Um, Oh, forced perspective, very cool. So as you see, when I pump the trigger, I can start getting some texture here and there. But only when I'm looking do I even think about, I, I just look at the subject, and then, you know, do the one second rule, and then let my observation take care of the texture. And your observation should take care of the texture. That's what's important, you know? Oh, Todd, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Todd says, nice work. Thank you, my friend. We are at 11.29. So, uh, so Tim, Todd says, Tim, what was that freehand shield? This is something, this is a pinup freehand shield, but someone went ahead and made a little one for me. And one of the things that are very important is I put uh, tape on these little openings because these little openings do nothing but cause problems. So you don't want any openings like that. So yeah, that's the, uh, I had a friend make that for me and I use this all the time. So... Thank you. Uh, she knows who did it for me, and I appreciate that. So, guys, it's 11.30, and you know what that means. Congratulations, congratulations to Mark, 888-H-A-E-R-88. You won this, so go ahead and email me uh, or send a message. Remember, to win the uh, India, uh, Airbrush India Ink Mixtures, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and leave a comment after the video is over saying you want to you wanna get those free Airbrush India ink. So that would be great. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be announcing the winner. I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks for hanging out with me. I made it even though I had a little bit of upset stomach. But thank you so much for putting up with me. God